Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History, living inside your aquarium. Uh, I just thought I would do uh, an episode where I answer some questions and also give you guys a little bit of fish news, maybe show you some of the stuff going on in my aquarium, uh, and uh, you know, that's kind of it. I'm kind of feeling a little blah, you know, uh, there's a lot going on in the country right now, and uh it's sad. It's sad to see, uh, no matter what what your take is on it, uh, it's it's a difficult time. So you know, uh, while we're at home on lockdown and I'm under curfew, there's not even grocery stores open right now or anything. Um, might as well focus on some fish, right? Uh, fish will fish will calm us. So uh, how's it going, everybody? As you filter in, I just want to say hi, let you guys know that I care about you and uh, the community on this channel that we've built together cares about you and, uh, and the creatures that we care for. Um, you guys are helping, you guys are helping the world by keeping a lot of these species and things that have um, gone extinct in the wild or they may go extinct in the wild you're really doing a lot to keep them alive uh, and also just uh, encouraging uh, that connection with nature in the house or in your life in general I think I think has a lot of power so uh, you know while we're waiting for people to filter in I, ha I do have quite a few updates since we last saw my fish room so to speak the fish house uh, and you know, the uh, the news has some interesting articles about fish in it today. Uh, so I figured I'd start out while folks meander in. We'd go over a couple uh, topics that I thought were interesting. And first of which is that there is a new uh, Lumia or Lumia species. Um, it's called the Jod Lumia, and it's from a lake in Haiti. Uh, on the island of the Dominican Republic in Haiti, they share an island um, of Domi Dominico. Is that the name of the island, honey? Haiti, Hispaniola, or is it what's an island? Haiti's island name. Uh, there's the Dominican Republic in the Dominican. right. Yeah, they're on the same island though. What's the island called? Hispaniola. In any case. I guess I'm an idiot, and I shouldn't have started that sentence without knowing the answer to it. But there is an island that Haiti's on, and it's on, on the same island as the Dominican Republic. And they've found a new fish, uh, a new freshwater fish, which I think is exciting. Um, you know, it, one, it's out in the ocean on an island. And two, it's in a lake on an ocean on an island. <laughs> so it's kind of like Inception. Uh, fish room fever, hey, Muppet, hey, DC, uh, F. PV, what is going on? Keeping cares fish is where it's at. Yeah, fake name. Hey, brother. Uh, Chara Dreamer, how's it going? Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's a new fish species discovered that brings it to five species that are endemic to the island of Haiti. And that was a grad student from, uh, oh, where was she from? Well, I, I guess it doesn't matter. She was from a U.S. college. And uh, so that has been officially cataloged and gotten a name with taxonomy and everything. So that's cool. Uh, I know a lot of people here keep like the barred Lumias uh, or the, um, uh, the uh, gold-lined ones. Uh, they're, they're a pretty live bear, and uh, they're kind of like a Goodyead kind of creature. Uh, kind of like a, a mix between, I'd say a mix between a platy and a, and, and a, uh, guppy is kind of what they look like. They are kind of plain and silver, this species, but, uh, it has a jaw that has a 90 degree angle in it turn. So it's kind of upturned in a funky way. Kind of interesting. Um, but, so there's a new fish. You can go check it out. I think, uh, Reef to Rainforest had it. Uh, Zen Ginger, thank you. I, I appreciate that you like my little headband. My wife found it uh, behind the dresser when we were doing some spring cleansing. And uh, 
she was like, hey, I don't remember having this. Do you, do you want it? And I was like, yes. I'll wear it on my live stream so that people will be more perplexed when I talk about my fingernails and my crazy use of colors and how that has so much to do with my gender identity. Right, wife? Yeah. So, um, anyhow, I just had to throw that in there because there's a lot of people that have left comments that are like, I don't care, but are you gay now? <laughs> like, uh, one, it wouldn't matter, and two, uh, ask my wife. Uh, in any case, I'm just, uh, I think we're all going a little crazy, cooped up with the madness. Um, and the next news story that I saw that was pretty cool uh, encompassed a couple new things that they figured out because of, if you guys were watching, uh, the first private uh, space launch uh, of a rocket going to the International Space Station with Americans has occurred, and SpaceX, with their, was the Dragon, was able to get two fellas up there. What was unnerving is the first flight was canceled, then the second flight uh, went okay, but it was a 50-50 shot whether the weather would be good enough, and the day before, they were testing out a new engine on this new massive satellite and possibly a uh, Mars-related system, uh, and it blew up huge. I mean, it was just a ginormous fireball. So, I don't know. That wouldn't have been the most relaxing video or sight to have seen if you were those astronauts uh, already rescheduled to go a little bit later. You know, they said that they had a, a 1 in 68 chance of dying, and that was the acceptable rate for the mission. So, pretty intense. But what does this have to do with fish, Alex? Stop meandering. Uh, yes, so what this has to do with fish is that they have um, two fish on the space station right now, in particular, at least that they've published uh, about, I uh, am planning on writing them because you can actually email the American astronauts uh, from time to time. But uh, they have, currently they have um, a few Danios up there. So they've got the Zebra Danio and Leopard Danio, which are the same. It's not the Leopard Danio that's the Escopii. It's the, um, it's the one that's the same as the Zebra Danio. Just physically it has different markings it was uh, bred in captivity for those markings so they have those because of their vision and they were curious about the way that they track vision and the way that uv light works and maybe how it evolved but they were testing their ability to look at stars and you may say of what what the f why do we care if Daniels, Zebra Daniels, can see stars and track them out the window of the space station? Who paid for this funding? NASA, FTW. Um, well, it turns out that this tells us a lot about our vision. And when we see a star, they've figured out that the, the uh, rods and cones in our eye, that we actually see one pixel we see in these units and it's the smallest unit we can see when we see a small star in the sky and then our brain fills in the rest uh other properties about it when we turn our head our eyes can't rem can't find that pixel and track it so we are actually imagining that and so they were somehow dissecting danios uh, ahead of time and they actually cut their eye so that they only had one of these pixels. Like, they didn't have a million pixels in their eyes to view with, or however many they have. I, I don't know. I'm not a Danio. Uh, but they were able to track food and follow UV light, and that's why they pick stars. Uh, they were able to pick it out with that one pixel. So there's some system that allows them to track, even though... They don't, they're not locking on, they're plotting its speed and direction and assuming where it's going. So uh, they're still working out, like they're still going to be figuring out what all this data means. But I just thought that was interesting, one, that they've now confirmed 
UVA and UVB light is seen by all Danios uh, that we know of, and most fish, really. And then if you've seen my videos in the past, you know that I've talked a lot about iridophores, which are the little crystals made out of guanine and guarine in the scales of fish. And this is what allows fish to have that silver flashy color that everybody is so uh, familiar with, you know, the fish scale look, uh, that kind of abalone uh, glittery look. And uh, then the color below that is their pigment in their skin. So, uh, yes, a new meaning to galaxy, Daniels. Thank you so much, Kimberly. That was a good one. Um, Chevy Fish, hello. How is it going? Zen Ginger. And um, let's see. What else we got going? Aqua Balls, what's up? Um, Jan Jantax, hello, or wait, Jackson Tax, how's it going? Uh, I, uh, I got to meet her, and I got a new plant that is a mystery that maybe you guys can help me solve. It's a Californian plant, and it is just kind of bizarre. It's outside right now. Um, it's a weird one. It's a weird one. Um, speaking of live bears, do you know if there are any fish related to the live bears we keep? Uh, that live in the ocean itself, not just brackish. Oh yeah, there there's definitely um, like uh, a lot of the rainbow fish and uh, pseudomagills. You can find them in the actual ocean. You can find them in the tide waters. Uh, they stay in the shallows and they come in into brackish water. and And some of them lay eggs in fresh water and then will go out um, later. But yeah, you can find them, which is um, interesting, but like the Pacific uh, Signifer and the Celebes, um, some of the killifish related ones uh, also. Uh, and then there's all sorts of fish that are larger that are like distantly related. I believe mullets are one of them. Uh, if you live down in Florida, you've seen them. They jump out of the water all the time. They go kind of spastic and go crazy when you a uh, kayak or boat past a group of them and they kind of all leap like little dolphins out of the water and flip and flop around. But uh, they're another one that can uh, tolerate brackish water really well. Um, so yeah. Um, now another one that's in the news. This one is about looting and rioting. I'm in Seattle and I live in the city. And uh, as much as everything has been chaotic around here we've i mean i'm sure you guys aren't seeing seattle news because uh every city's having crazy issues i mean fargo north dakota sioux cities rapid city uh i mean casper wyoming all sorts of places have had uh protests riots looting vandalism peaceful protests too but just things going on. It's a crazy situation. I think a lot of people are tired of being locked down. A lot of people are out of work. A lot of people are frustrated, bored. Um, but in the chaos, somebody broke into the Northeast uh, Aquarium and got into the penguin enclosure. And it was rumored for the last three days that somebody stole this very beloved uh, emperor penguin. And uh, it turns out it's not true. The uh, aquarium keepers actually uh, knew that there could be a ish an issue and uh, basically took the penguin away to an undisclosed penguin location. So, good news for the penguins, uh, and I don't think they messed with any of the fish either, actually. Uh, I think they stole a register out of the gift shop or something. <clears throat> but, crazy world we live in, that social issues happen, and, you know, that, I don't know, craziness goes on with police killing someone, and we end up having penguins possibly stolen. What? Okay, so, uh, the, yeah, they took him to Antarctica. Good guess. I don't think so. Uh, this uh, video is brought to you by Dr. Pepper in that I drink it, um, 
but they don't pay me or anything, and I wish they would. So maybe if I keep lying and saying that they're sponsoring this, eventually they will. If somebody works for them, someone down in Texas or Oklahoma, can you, can you uh, get on that? And also, you know, so I shaved my crazy beard. Uh, I don't want to look like I live in... Uh, I'm, I'm not a crazy fish person, okay? I, okay, I'm a crazy fish person, but I want to look like one. I don't want to look like a crazy cat person, fish person, whatever. So I know I need to shave. But, so I don't want to hear it. Okay, I get it. My nails, they're fabulous. My beard, it's not. Um, next up in fish news, pretty exciting. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about something near and dear to my heart as we were spoke spoken as we were spoken about uh, fingernails and um, uh, my rainbow headband, perhaps. And my beard, perhaps. Maybe they're all tied together. I don't know. But let's talk about transgender. Wait for it. Wait for it. Madaka rice fish. So we're going to talk about sex changing Madaka rice fish. That was the last news story I wanted to bring up. After that, we can do questions. We can look at what's in Alex's tanks. And uh, I have baby angelfish fry, which I'm sure will get eaten later tonight. Uh, not by me. I'm <laughs> we haven't gotten that desperate here. Uh, although all of our stores are closed, which is really frustrating because of the stupid curfew. Um, so my wife wanted to get some stuff for dinner, but, but no! Or gifts for a friend's... Whatever. Okay. So, let's talk about fish, okay? Um... Fish Dreams, I appreciate you, uh, and, uh, well, I appreciate all of you, but uh, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying this rambling talk that I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch of hate for, uh, that I'm not getting to the point. But, you know, you guys are my friends, and uh, I, I want these live streams a lot of times, unless I say I'm doing a lecture on something, these updates and things, uh, the troubleshooting and the uh, tips and tricks that kind of stuff, news, updates. Uh, I want it to be personal because, you know, we, we're, we're getting to be a big channel, which thank you, you guys. That's awesome. It's getting so that I appreciate those of you who support me on Patreon oh so much. I really do. Um, it is really, really, really helpful. But, um, you know, now I'm making ad money uh, at before taxes, like 150 to 250 a month. Um, through YouTube with all my past 500 videos in the last four years um, and the new ones put together. And so, you know, all the super chats and all the, the uh, um, what do you call it, uh, the Patreon stuff is helpful, you know. Super chats, I love them. It's just they take, they take like 45% of it when it's all said and done. Um, but I do, you know, I still do them, but like to other channels. Um, but that stuff really does help keep things going, especially with how I'm sure all of you guys are having rough times too, and so am I. So, uh, fish nerds, unite, uh, pour some out for the hidden penguins of the Northeast, and, uh, let's talk about Japanese rice fish changing their gender. So... New article just came out today. Talks about Madaka rice fish. Do we know anything about Madaka rice fish, people? Yes, we do. We do, we do, we do. And uh, yes, I... Well, I don't have a PayPal tip jar, but if you want to go to Alexander J. Williamson at gmail.com, you can always go to my PayPal and leave a, a tip there. It's much appreciated. Mucho bueno... We sumimasen. Um, but yes, I just want to get my mind off. Yes, Jan uh, uh, Jackson tax rambling. I just want to get my mind off of the tear gas going on like a mile that way right now. I'm not kidding either. You, you might even hear like some pops outside. Um, but. 
in any case, so let's let me focus. I'm trying to focus, guys. Sorry, sorry. Let me focus. All right. Okay. Back to the sex changing Madaka rice fish. I was going to show you guys some sex changing rice fish. Let's do that. Come on. Come on. So, you guys know that my baddest, they change uh, gender on me all the time. I'm like, what the heck? Why'd you do that? Uh, but a lot of the little fish, uh, pygmy sunfish, things like that, uh, where they have one head male that's kind of like the alpha male, and then there's some sneaker males. A lot of those types of species actually have um, uh, the ability to change their gender. And now they're trying to figure out like why and how and what's happening. So these are platinum Madaka rice fish right here. Um, what is it? Lapsus or Ortias is how their Latin name is. But uh, these have been bred in captivity to have a nice like little uh, pearl scale on them. It almost looks like ick, uh, but you can see it there on the tail a little bit. Live streams, terrible color and light, obviously. Um, but, yes, so these little rice fish, they've been doing just fine for a few months now in this bowl. No filter or anything. They're just chilling. And they're laying eggs and things. And uh, these rice fish, just to show you too, we've got a jar with their eggs in it right now. And then we've got babies downstairs. But their eggs... I thought maybe this is where they were going to decide if they change gender. I, don't know, I was just thinking in my head, like, how do they do that? But here is a bunch of rice fish eggs right there at the bottom where you can actually see their eyes forming and they've got little spinal cords and they'll be hatching tonight, tomorrow, the next day probably. In fact, I think I see one. Uh, there's one swimming around in this jar already. So um, they'll be hatching. They all hatch very quickly once one hatches. There's a hormone, and they uh, they get this signal. And they're like, okay, let's let's do it. Break free, gang. See, see. The guard's gone. Uh, so probably later tonight they'll, they'll break free and do that. Um, but when they're born, if you... This is what the scientists did... And they did this on the space station because you've got to go all the way to space to do this, apparently. Uh, you don't, actually. You can, you can, uh, you too, with the knowledge I will give you today, you too can change the gender of your right fish at home. So, what you're going to do, you're going to have your fish, you're going to hatch them, you're going to let them eat their yolk sac, and you're going to give them their first meal of uh, infusoria, uh, of, I don't know, maybe some little paramecium's, maybe, maybe vinegar eels, maybe some uh, white micro worms. I don't know, go crazy. But you're going to feed them, and then all of a sudden, for five days, you can feed them for five days, and uh, they will be able to uh, live through that no problem. Five days, I guess, was the period where they decided that not a single rice fish was going to have a problem with, with that, uh, even as a baby. But five days starvation, they found, uh, they took genetic samples, and yes, they did have to kill some rice fish, so sorry if that upsets you. Uh, science! So they, uh, they kill the, the baby rice fish at first, and they find, uh, you know, they hatch them at the same temperature, the same parents. Uh, they take half of each clutch of eggs, and so maybe if the rice fish had 10 eggs, then five will be in this experiment, five will be in the control. So it, it should match up rough pretty closely. Um, and then they would take the, the, the DNA swab of the fish, the little teeny fish with a very, very teeny needle, and they would decide what gender they were. And they could see that their chromosomes were XX or XY. Well, after starving them, it turned out that 20%, almost exactly 20%, in seven different groups of the test groups turned into uh, males from females. So uh, they are postulating that the reason this happens is that rice fish 
when they know that there's not enough food, instead of wasting the energy to lay more eggs... So, mo okay, let me go back a step. Most fish, when they are starving or having a deficiency in a certain nutrient, like guppies, for instance, they can withhold having babies. Uh, and that's one awesome tactic that really does help them survive. The other thing they can do is they have babies, but they just eat them. Angelfish will do that a lot of times. If they're lacking protein, they haven't had enough other food, they'll just turn and decide to eat their babies and I they get a lot of the nutrients back that they just wasted essentially um, because there's no food for the babies and this is why it's really important people a lot of times just think that uh, fish are magical and you just put them together and they have babies and a lot of these stimuli don't matter they matter so much so I mean you the fact that there are little teeny bits of food available for babies, the parents are looking for these cues and it actually sets off hormones. That's why we do things like split up fish. That's why we do cold water changes to mimic uh, weather changes. You can actually mimic uh, pressure changes. I wanna do a video on that, how barometric pressure in some new studies has actually determined uh, how many fish will hatch and things like that. If there is a ginormous uh, decrease in barometric pressure, Fish, in general, tend to lay more eggs. They also tend to eat more uh, so that they can lay more eggs. And that is because generally when the pressure drops a ton, it means that there's a big lightning storm coming in. And in the tropical regions, a lot of times when this goes on, more so than just in the afternoon when there's normally lightning storms in a lot of rainforests, this actually... Um, signals that there is a big like monsoon or or tropical depression or hurricane coming and that it will be flooding and so it triggers hormonally in the fish this awesome evolutionary thing saying have instead of 200 eggs do 500 and that low pressure the the eggs will hatch 48 to 72 hours later well also the timer that is set on when those eggs hatch can either be all at once, it can be staggered or whatnot. But if it's triggered by the barometric pressure and not food constraints, they're finding that when it's just the pressure drop, they'll all hatch at the same time as quickly as possible. And uh, that's because uh, when the barometric pressure drops, the forest floods and it just spreads everywhere. So you're gonna get your eggs sent all over the place. And they're going to get into pockets and areas in the next few days where fish normally wouldn't get. So I think um, that would be, I mean, I just think that's really cool um, that evolution has done that. Um, how do I learn all this awesomeness? I am a nerd and I read a lot. There are a lot of great publications. And the other thing I was going to start doing, I think, for my Patreon supporters, I think I'll start doing it at the maybe like the three dollar level maybe even at the dollar level i don't know um because i understand like i don't know i understand i don't want to give a dollar to all the shows i watch on youtube but um i want to start citing sources and like putting more resources uh in patreon as i study and learn because there's a lot of stuff i comb through and i don't use right then but i'm like this is fascinating i should share this and so I'm thinking of that being kind of one of the things because I want to kind of reorganize that and give you guys more like incentive than, hey, you get to um, come up with what the next episode is if you give 20 bucks a month. Like, you know, that's a cool reward, but I don't know how many people want to do that. And I'm pretty suggestible as a guy. I'm pretty easy to approach. People know that if they give more than 20 bucks a month on Patreon that I give out my cell phone number, but uh, other people also know that I've done that to people who, you know, can't contribute financially at all just because, you know, I want to help out. But um, I can't do that to everyone, so i got to figure out maybe some incentives. But um, uh, the, the, the back, to the, back to the sex changing. So... Uh, while we do this, let's look at some rice fish and then we'll go downstairs and we'll talk about sex changes downstairs. Not, not sex, not Nimrin. Okay. You guys get it. Uh, so come on camera, turn around. 
No. No. And I got dark circles under my eyes today. And I slept too. Okay. So rice fish. These are the red cap rice fish that I got from Aquatic Arts. Super hardy, super awesome. Uh, the color doesn't show up super well on this uh, because of this kind of natural diffused light, pastel lighty thing. But uh, these are um, these are the rice fish that I have that I'm in love with right now. I've got four species right now, or or two species, uh, three variety three or four varieties, depending on how you want to count it, of them. I've got the daisies blue, which are a Malaysian rice fish. Then I've got these Japanese, um, Orotizio, no, I'm not even going to try. Okay, um, lapis rice fish. Uh, and these are the red caps. Like, this one looks like a white cap, but then as soon as you look at it from above, when it gets out of the light, you guys can probably see that on the live stream, that it's got a beautiful orange creamsicle colored head um well maybe you can't i don't know whatever i don't care so these fish though they they change so if they don't have enough lipids it's specifically lipids not even just food if they don't have enough lipids in their diet they will change to more males and if you starve them again at another month in they will change even more and so unlike all those other fish that we were talking about, uh, the angelfish, the tetras, other fish that have been known to switch their genders, gouramis, man, there's a lot of fish that can do it now that we, like once we really start studying, we've learned so many can do it. Uh, but the, the fish will do that and they waste that energy and they have to eat it. But when they eat the, their eggs after the fact, after they've already laid them, they're going to lose some energy unless they let their babies hatch and eat food on their own. But this is what happens when there is no food for the babies to eat on their own. Uh-oh. So when there is no food in the microscopic level for them, for the baby um, rice fish, more become male, and then that means that there's only so many females, and the females are the ones that have eggs. Now, these rice fish are bonkers. These ones I got from Aquatic Arts, and yes, there's a link to a discount below uh, in the description if you guys want to get these. They're a little pricey because they're real hard to find anyways, and then there's kind of a blockade slash, you know, worldwide quarantine thing going on. Uh, and now uh, social unrest, so have fun with that. But... Um, these fish here uh, have up to 28 eggs at a time. I've never seen rice fish have anywhere near that. This, this uh, strain, these red caps, have massive clutches. So uh, this gal right here with the most orange, she had a clutch of 28 eggs a few days ago. Another one had 21 eggs last night. So um, and they seem to hatch at about 80%. So the first thing that happens is they can decide how many eggs am I going to create in my ovaries and release. So if there's not enough food, they're going to lay one or two every day or two. Um, in the mornings, they hold on to their eggs. If you guys know anything about rice fish, they hold on to them on their fins. And then they've got this kind of, uh, it's almost like a, a cord that hangs back and all the uh, eggs are on it and then they can uh, kind of swim quickly and snap off chunks of eggs and so they can leave five eggs on this plant and one egg on this plant and five eggs on this plant and two on that or whatever so um, the the fish have less babies that's their first uh, reaction to it with the adults but the babies turn to female or turned from female to male, as I had said. Look at the purling on this one. She's so pretty. Um, and that then makes it so obviously there's less females to have eggs. Males can only fertilize eggs. And in rice fish, they're kind of weird in that they actually are like live bears. They um, have intercourse with a gonopodium and a gravid spot area um they will 
they have a fin and the male comes up next to the, the females and tucks in the milt and then the female is, uh, cultures the eggs in her body for a while and then she releases them, holds them on her belly for the morning or maybe up to 12 hours but as little as an hour sometimes and then uh, she will drop the eggs or, or I should say she'll fix them to some structure in the tank it may be um, like there's actually an egg right here if you guys can see it uh, in the tank but there's little eggs stuck all over and then they promptly eat the babies uh, the other fish or sometimes the rice fish but this tank for instance doesn't have a lot of microscopic food and the way I get them to keep having babies is I feed them a fatty diet I give them omega-3 fatty acids which is a uh, ground salmon and uh, I don't give them like globs of grand, ground salmon. It's not like Napoleon Dynamite. Like, Tina, eat your food. Um, it's it's uh, uh, fry food and uh, also this awesome food I'll show you guys downstairs too that um, my friend Meredith from the channel, a viewer, sent me uh, this great food that the fish really like. Uh, but that tells them, oh, we got lots of fat. We can live like fat cats and fat fish I guess and then the fat fish uh, you know they don't have to have those babies and that prevents them from wasting the energy in the first place now the really crazy part about this whole study the craziest part other than the uh, fat controlled sex we've known that estrogen in humans uh, controls uh, fat we've known that uh, testosterone, progesterone, a lot of these hormones uh, are stored in fat or they um, can be increased the heavier you are sometimes. Uh, there's just different interactions. So we've known that there's something going on in a lot of species that way. But uh, with these guys, they actually, when they're young, their chromosomes change. So they, they change from XX to XY after that starvation uh, period that turns 20% of them to males. And then if they get enough fat, they actually get rid of the testes that they had and they can no longer impregnate other fish, but all the males actually have stem cells that could be egg cells in them even the ones that are born male and stay male. So it's really kind of a cool thing. It's like a Jurassic Park, like life will find a way type thing. Uh, but when they have enough fat, they'll switch back to, to males. And the way they get that fat in their wild habitat is through plankton, through krill. And, uh, you know, since they are little omnivores and they mostly eat little teeny bugs and things, they get that through insects or plankton. Um, and little krill and brine shrimp and things like that is where they get most of their fat and protein from. Uh, but we can switch them back and forth based on that. And in other species, it's temperature. It's uh, hormones in the water. It's If there's too much estrogen in the water, then they'll start, then a number of the fish will turn into males because they can sense there's too many females in the water and they don't need to produce so many babies that they can't have food, uh, you know, that they eat all their food source. So this is just really cool in my mind, especially when they live in small lakes and streams and rice paddies that are seasonally constantly changing. The fact that this fish, unlike most fish, can flip-flop back and forth, at least from male, or I should say female to male, back to female back to male they've documented at least that and it's suspected that they can do it several more times but they usually only live a year to two or three years depending on the species of killi or rice fish so it's really bonkers that they can do that and rice fish can actually survive um and have uh, they're sexually mature within three months of being born which is incredibly fast. If you guys have fry, you'll know that um, a, lot, a lot of fry aren't even, they don't even look like the fish they're supposed to be by then. Like angelfish fry, like 
just starting to look like angelfish. They look like little freaky mutants. Um, but let me just check in real quick. These fish will be having babies soon. I feel it. And also this guppy grass, I need to move out of the way because it's just making a mess. And the angels can zoom through it. This is all room for them to play. Uh, and then also the cribs, I'm hoping that they have more babies too. They had nine babies and I don't know what became of them. They were in there and now they're just like, oh, peace out. We don't care about the babies. But um, the Sergio back in the corner is paired off with her at the moment. And these two females, if you guys saw my video on estrogen and tanks and how that works, you saw that Sergio paired off with all three females. So crazy. I've never seen uh, cichlids pair off with more than one uh, other cichlid individual at a time. I've seen them serial mon monogamy before, but I'd never seen them do that. So in any case, um, let's go downstairs and look at some babies. Uh, I think it's time for that. Uh, you know what's interesting is it's uh, near solstice here for us. June 21st will be solstice. Zebra, or I mean my leopard frog plecos are out. They're kind of washed out right now. I wonder what's going on with that. Uh, one of them is very gravid. She has lots of bubbies in her belly. She's got this pot belly. I mean, they kind of do anyways. But this male, I don't think he's old enough yet to... Oh, maybe he is. I don't know. They just haven't done it. They haven't sealed the deal yet. And... Uh, I'm a madman, madman, I'm, I'm several people, uh, and I decided to put the, uh, the, uh, not the pelvic acromus, the, uh, nanochromus, put both of them back in here, um, one of them seems to live in here, and the other one seems to say, I'll uh, piss off and lives wherever, so, I don't know, I don't think they're gonna spawn, which is frustrating me. I just don't, they're not, they're definitely not pairing up anymore. At first they were kind of like, oh, we're besties. We love each other. And now, yeah, see, there, there goes one right now. Um, now they don't really seem to care uh, what the other one does. Come on. But they do have cool eyeliner, um, which I think you guys probably saw recently. Uh, will she come back? Oh, it's the, is it the male? Yeah, it's the male. Uh, so the male's back in here. He'll he'll pop up in a sec, but you'll see he's got pink, uh, crazy pink eyeshadow. I like to say, to remember the pelvic acromis uh, species. There are several. There's nine of them, but to remember them, I like to think of the Drew Carey show and Mimi and her crazy eyeshadow. That's like ginormous and hideous. She'd like do blue or pink or whatever. Um, these guys have crazy pink eyeshadow um over their eyes like neon neon pink here we go here he comes i think it's the he hold on i can't see the shape of the tail yet polyandry yes correct um let's see here whoa i was like where did he even go everybody but he's right here he's afraid of a cory dory Cory Dory, uh, Cory Dora Hebrosis, uh, but yes, so that, oh, that's actually the female, but they both have the crazy eyeshadow, and, uh, yeah, so, they're not really colorful either right now, at night sometimes they color up really nicely, but right now, not so colorful, um, I bet they always hang in his little hut, um, also the polysperma, uh, hygrophila is looking magnifique. It looks super beautiful right now. Well, that doesn't look super beautiful, but super pink. If you could see, yeah, you can probably see that. So, yeah, looks super pink, looks good. The garamis are spawning. Uh, they make a little floating nest, kind of like uh, bettas do. They're, a, they're another fish that has uh, bubble nests, but they'll all also scatter and lay eggs that way too they're very adaptable they're they're ninjas if you will and then also we've got the uh, they're all settled in doing well the pencil fish uh, and then we've got the jelly bean tetras with the orange fins and then we've got these which aren't cochus these are actually a blue colombian tetra 
um, Kilgore, 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 Kilgore uh, Tetris. And they're just real pretty. They've got this blue, like, just almost like glows, like a neon light, bluish purple color. And then they've got a little pink or purple dot right on their peduncle. And if I'll do an episode soon on fish anatomy. I feel like we should all brush up on the weird words like peduncle uh, that fish have or labyrinth, your labyrinth organ this fish has but yeah this this tank has been producing a lot of eggs and i've just been swooping them out of here quickly man it looks so washed out it's so frustrating to me that such a bright and beautiful tank looks so washed out when um this stuff the oval the nicaea ovalis uh variegated is looking good um has yellow variegation there we go farther down and then the Red Star Ludwigia is like this beautiful peach and like metallic pink on the edges here. It looks like it's airbrushed pink. And then it's still got green. And it doesn't really go to yellow, which is odd. Usually it kind of runs through the color wheel in order. Uh, but oh, as I was saying, because of, of uh, the, peak, the peak sunlight timing, the, you can see the Kabamba has closed up. It's closing up for the night. So you can see it's still open right here. But the top, the crowns, are starting to close because it's becoming nighttime. So you can see it closing up as we speak. This is Rotala Walukia. This is Mayaka. Mayaka, I love saying that. But yeah, and see where, it's get, where it still gets more light? It's open, but it's closing at the top where it's the densest, where the most color is. Where those red chromatophore, or uh, sorry, uh, the red cells are. When we looked under the microscope, green cells contain chlorophyll so do the red cells but the red color only takes in certain lower bandwidths of light and so that red light is saying or the red color in plants is saying hey guys i'm cool i can take i can take the lower light i there's so much light in the environment i'm gonna make red because i don't need to be there i don't need to have green soaking up all the light so um yeah Meredith, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Uh, and that's what I was going to say is I was actually going to, we were going to head downstairs. I hope I don't lose you guys. Um, do, 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 do. And Jackson Tax says, I really like the, plant, the pink plant. I am enjoying the plants I got from you so much. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, no problem. I love hooking people up with plant packs, especially like... Um, a variety pack when you don't have a lot of species yet it's just like it's so it, i spent so much money and time collecting the plants i have um that now it feels like what am i going to do with 150 species like oh, i want to share like i want them to be in the, the hobby i want you know and so so they are that's what i do the end uh but this stuff that meredith sent me stuff's killer uh it's called uh uh, sustainable aquatics dry hatchery diet and uh, it's just it's great man this stuff is awesome all my fish I am foaming at the mouth you know what I did I may or may not have been at an event where I was speaking and making noise with my mouth outside for hours uh, and I may have actually torn the corners of my mouth by yelling <clears throat> I was a little upset over the week rough week uh but yeah this stuff is awesome loves it uh all my fish like it and oh 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 yeah we're gonna show you the big secret of the night i don't know about the secret but the big reveal of the night Ugh. look what we have here oh yeah that is a whole poop load of baby angelfish. So many baby angelfish. Hello, Father. Look at it when he brushes by. So they just hatched today. And uh, they get stressed out and they eat them like every time, which just is so freaking frustrating. Um, the name of the light on this tank here. 
the one upstairs was, uh, there's a link to it in the description, I believe. But the name of the one upstairs was the, uh, was the, um, oh gosh, why am I drawing a blank? I shouldn't be drawing a blank on this thing. Um, uh, the Twin Star, and that's what's on this tank too. Twin Star. Love Twin Stars. Not a lot of things to play with. You can play with the power if you get an adapter. And that's about it. Um, and then over here, this is a Fluval 3.0. And so this syncs with my phone. Love it. I love it. This is Kabamba Purple. This is the American Kabamba. You guys know that I'm crazy about that uh, fire red Kabamba from uh, South America. But that this is the stuff that you find in uh, the Carolinas and Georgia, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee. I was just in Tennessee not too long ago, and they had this um, in a lot of the ponds. And same with the Ludwigia arculata. Um, how many ember tetras for a 20-gallon tall? Uh, you love my YouTube. Thank you so much, Ambie. Um I would say, uh, you know, if, if you don't have any other fish in there... I would say um, you could easily put 30 Ember Tetras in there. But what I would do if I were you is I would get something like a uh, an Auto Synchless and maybe a few Shrimp and maybe some Clown Killies uh, or you know something like that and then some Ember Tetras. The other really fun thing, uh, if you saw the Ember Tetras upstairs, is Reed Tetras. They are very similar. And they will school with the ember tetras. Um, you see these fish have their whole uh, own territory back there that they're guarding. Uh, yeah, so it's question time now, folks. Um, and I'll keep showing you guys stuff because I got some babies and things. But um, Chevy Fish, did I get your question? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I think, didn't you have another question about, somebody had a question. Let me look, look real quick. Um, oh, somebody had a question about angelfish pairing, but I don't remember the details. Um, I have an outdoor pond, 100 gallon and, two and one 250, but both are reaching high 80s and low 90s. That's a little hot, but, um, but uh, I mean, you could <laughs> have discus in there. No, they get too cold at night, probably. No, you could probably have uh, killifish in there, and you could probably have uh i mean obviously you can have guppies and bettas uh any sort of labyrinth fish grommies um some of the gudgeons you can probably have in there they could they don't mind the heat but uh also uh some of the danios are really resilient like the um the uh i would say that probably the zebra danios are fine out there um Oh, Kimberly Logger says, all three of my angelfish are females and they lay eggs together. Like they have a male that is with all of them, like a, a harem. I just had never seen that in my tanks. It's always like one pair and then the rest are like jealous. They're like, uh, Karen hooked up with Sergio. Um, what's up, Mark? How's it going, brother? Um, I hope you're doing well. The Yeti, what is going on? Um... Oh, just all females laying eggs. Okay. Yeah, they'll do that. They'll sync up, and they'll also sync up with the moon, um, the lunar cycle, which makes sense now that we're learning that fish can see so well with the UV light. Uh, the moonlight provides just like daylight. It gives them a lot of light uh, to see with. And now the other thing that we have to realize is that most fish can't see the color range we can see of visible light aka our visible light. However, their brain may be processing their spectrum of UV light to have colors we can't even imagine. They're just, we can't see them. It's not possible for our brain to think of them. And so it may be that uh, there's a crazy, um, you know, ever-changing color of uh, blue blah, blah 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 that's just some color we can't fathom in the in the spectrum and that these fish like we see a spectrum that's this much you know from purple to red or whatever or red to blue and purple kind of uh 
and they may see this much with the UV having an extra five different color variants. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and the other thing it does is when fish, are you eating them? I'm watching you. I watching you. Uh, it, it, when they sparkle, when the fish sparkle, uh, think of that UV light bouncing off all over because UV light reflects a lot better than visible light. So this UV light hitting this fish is hitting here. It's hitting up here. It's hitting here. So some predatory fish have learned to hunt, and they hunt by UV light. But other fish, like uh, guppies, for instance, they'll see the UV light, and or they don't see UV light as well, I should say. They do see it, but they don't see it as well. And so they do their mating dance based on pigments that is in their flesh uh, and in the spectrum that they can see. They can see reds very well because uh, carotene is what they want. Carotenoids in their diet are the hardest uh, nutritional element to find. And so when they're in a pond where the males have red markings, it shows for sure that they had both iodine and carotenoids uh, in some of the fruit or uh, insects that were in the area. And the females say, hell yeah, I want that, that ballin' ass homeboy with the carotenoids to uh, be my boo. And so then they uh, get together and that's that. But the UV light is actually not for them, it's for predators. So they find that the males with the red dots that are extra flashy, I have a whole video on this from a while back, they have iridophores on them naturally, which looks like silver to our eye, but what it is, is it's like a disco ball and it's distracting for predators when they're shaking and dancing and moving around and chasing the females. It makes it look like there's a, a light point up here and a light point here and here and here. And it can turn one fish into like a school of fish. It's like a, a very interesting form of camouflage. So there's that. All right, guys. So what else is going on? Well, let's start up here. So we got little teeny tiny fishies and little teeny tiny shrimpies. Um, and this tank is just dirty as hell, but it's, I mean like the glass is, but it, the, everything's all good here. Uh, Aquatic Adventures with Alex. What's up, Alex? North Florida, huh? What part? Are you in like uh, Gainesville, Ocala, Panhandle, Jacksonville? Where are you at? Um, so here we have the little platinum. They're much smaller than the red caps, and they only have two or three babies at a time. Um, let's see. Alex, I'm almost done cycling my new, uh, just doing Florida, this is. Um, I'm almost done cycling my new 90P. Oh, nice. That's what I've got upstairs. And I was thinking of putting 20 Harlequins, 12 Pygmies, and a Betta as a centerpiece do you think the betta will bother the quarries no uh no i don't think so uh i mean i've got bettas up here check this out and they're with madaka rice fish they're with flouncy tailed uh um guppies and uh most of the time they're with uh these baddis now i just fed these baddis and these are baby baddis baddest babies and look at all these uh this seems to be around the limit to how many there's i think there's five or six i think there's six uh in a 20 long of the baby bettas that i had same deal here bettas they're fine it's just you, they have to be siblings that were raised together and you can keep them for a while i had 50 of them all together in this tank now there's only like three or four left in this tank, like this pure white one, this platinum one. And then I've just got my um, Samfong Rasboras and uh, some of my Ruby uh, Tetras. Ruby Tetras never had much color, these ones, and they haven't gained much. And then pea puffers. So the mix in here is a little different. I use this as my hatching tank for the bettas um i'm kind of over the betta project i just i don't know they kind of bore me um or they kind of bored me i should say 
from compared to some of the other fish that I have to work with right now. Um, here we've got uh, all the Blue Dream shrimps, and then I was going to say, the fish that I was recommending earlier, uh, let's see, let's find it. Do, 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 do. Where are you? Um, the Clown Killie. Uh, I have them in here. And now, of course, I can't find any. I can find some baby shrimp and a pregnant shrimp, but no, where are my fish? There's three of them in here. The whole idea in this tank was that they were, oh, here's one right up here. So the whole idea in this tank was that they were going to spawn naturally, but I don't think it's going to happen. I don't know. Clown killies have been elusive for me. But here's a female. She's got that big old belly full of eggs right now. And very kind of dull colors. Whereas the males have... Um, they have like a red... It looks like a rocket booster. There's some over here too. Let's see here. And my half beaks are over here. Which, I man, I want them to breed so bad. They just won't. I don't know why. I'm just a terrible parent, I guess. Uh, also these fish, um, we've got the little Kubota or Kubato, Kubota rasboras in here. And then we've got, uh, the Phoenix rasboras looking mighty fine. Look at that male right there. Ooh wee, he purdy. So, um, yeah. And then we've got all the shrimp, all the shrimp hanging out doing their thing we've got an auto sinkless pooping um and then we've got some daniels some escopi daniels these are also known as panther daniels just like the uh ranero or uh zebra daniel uh, and then we've also got loaches the multi-barred loach and some celestial pearl daniels and some aru2 uh, Gertrudei pseudomagills are in here. There's just a weird assortment of fish in this tank, I have to say. And one, uh, Gara Flavada. I don't know. He's He's got beautiful color, though. I posted a picture on Facebook, if you guys are on Facebook, um, of him and his face the other day just was freaking priceless. He looked like a little bulldog, just like humph, humph. Um, but yeah, the weird part about this tank is the shrimp are just this never ending. Uh, I don't know how they survive with all these fish, all these micro fish at that that, or nano fish that want to make them food. Um, yeah, I want to get more half beaks. Just nothing is coming in the country right now. Pretty much everyone selling fish is spawning them in in the U.S. right now, or their leftover supplies. Uh, so that's kind of frustrating, but, um, over here, uh, you can see my lovely little rice fish babies. Hello. They've got blue eyes, platinum body. And, uh, these are the, these are the red caps. This one's a little bit younger, probably hatched a day or two difference from the other one come on sorry there's a heater cord in the way um even though the heaters aren't on in here right now i have them in here just in case just in case something fails they'll kick on uh and then i'm leaving them with the shrimp controversial i don't know controversial uh, uh Man, why is everyone pooping today? So this is a good teachable moment. Looks like this shrimp is about to shed. You see that that uh, the white coming up on its shell? That's a sign, one, that it's going to shed usually and that it doesn't have, like it's got red legs and everything. You can see its little joints also have some lightness on them. It's going to shed out of there, and it's probably because it's a female that had eggs recently that just hatched that are all over the place, these little guys. Uh, but they need more calcium. That's what this means. And you can see she is eating a snail, which is odd. 
the digestive tract of a snail, but she may be trying to get calcium out of that snail shell or something like that because uh, you could tell she just doesn't have enough calcium. Now, over here, we also have some little baby fish. I don't know which fish this is, and I feel like a fool for not. It looks like a baddis. It looks like my Malaysian baddis, but I don't know. I really don't know, and it just ate poop. Awesome. The water current... Uh, okay, that's a worm that it was just looking at there. See, I gave them some vinegar eels and micro worms earlier, but literally it just ate a curly cue of poop. How brilliant these fish are. Um, let's see here. The other fish that are in here, though, on the bottom, like this guy, this is a Corydora hebrosis. And you can actually see its little whiskers forming already. And it's got these lateral lines that go all the way from its nose down its body. But when it's little, they manifest like very visible up in the nose area too. Kind of interesting. Um, and uh, up in here, we've got the platinum. Not the red cap, but the platinum. Uh rice fish and they're starting to actually look like rice fish they've got the the opalescent pearly scales um yeah so hell yeah all right and then here we've got lots of these little shrimp that have hatched there's no male red cherry shrimp in here that are adults uh because i only have uh these guys these little red riding hood or red cap shrimp i want to put the red cap rice fish and the red cap shrimp together um but i'll try to find you guys a small one real quick because there's, there's some there's so many teeny shrimp in this tank and they're taking forever to grow this is what that fish ate was another curly q of poo i don't know why there is another fish over there but yeah so there's all these little quarries and um I'm assuming quarries and baddis fish. Uh, the the baddis eggs came in, must have come in on the on the, uh, the moss. That's all I can figure. But um, the little shrimp that are all over the place in here, uh, some of them you can see they're getting color uh, very early. Others take longer. The red cap kind seem to take a teeny bit longer. Um, let me get a prodding stick so I can show you guys uh, some some stuff. Show you a little something, something. So here we've got more female uh, of these very, very, these are from Aquatic Arts, very nice quality. Uh, red cherry shrimp, shrimp gumbo. Oh, there's one of the young red caps. Uh, little Red Riding Hood shrimp. But then up in here, we've got some really young ones hiding in the algae. Can you guys see those? They're so teeny. They don't even have any color. They're just clear. They were born like today. They're hard to see, though. But there's one right there. And another one right there. Next to that snail. That's a baby, too. Uh, so the snails in here indicate... Alex, you're feeding too much. You're dummy. So just note to self, if you see this many like little baby snails all over the place, you're feeding too much because Alex, you're a dummy. Um, I'm seeing little critters in here, and I don't know what they are. They're moving around. You guys see this too? Have you heard this? Have you seen this? Uh, what are these? Is that a fish? Or is it a shrimp? What's happening? It's a shrimp. The way it's sorting through things, it's got to be a shrimp. Uh, yeah. Oh, and here comes another little red cap. I'm hoping they get darker. Woke up at 4 a.m. again, stopping by while I make a quick drink. Well, hello, Daniel Keeping Fish, and welcome. Israel Ponce. Do I sell fish? I do, but mostly locally. I don't like selling stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, like in the mail, that's what I meant. <laughs> I need to complete my thoughts, don't I? Also, 
the other fish, um, no, Monday's not my usual streaming day also, by the way. I don't know. I don't, usually I kind of do a Tuesday, or sorry, like a Tuesday or Wednesday, and then a Saturday or Sunday stream, but lately the world is just on its end, and I was sick and not feeling well for a long time with some health issues, and then I couldn't get medication because of um, world issues going on um, that, that helps my lupus. And I have to rest before um, I do live streams and stuff. These are the baby salt and pepper or hebrosis little teeny catfish. And um, they're doing well. Uh, you can tell, though, that some, that there is, uh, some of them have uh, like big old full bellies of food like this guy. Sorry, it's shaky. I'm just zoomed in like as far as I can on this camera. And others are, are a different species where you can't see through their belly. So these are the Venezuelas, I think. These are the Venezuelan quarries. Um, all right. Uh, David Rayner, hello. We have great people in here. Thank you guys for being such a great part of society fish society um i appreciate it this is a weird tank i don't know what i'm doing with it there's like the bio load could be huge that i could run in in this tank if i wanted to with a hang off the back and sponge filters running um i don't know what i'm doing also i'm gonna need to sell some of these uh bettas get them out of here they're you know they've been talking back and they don't pay rent and you know it's just it's a problem Look at how pregnant she is. Jeez. Jeez. Have some decency. Um, let's go outside and take a look at um, Jackson Tax, the plant she gave me. After, there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys. So, is it this fish? Come on. Better. So, these fish were white, completely white at first. Now it has this pearl scale and like this really crazy gray cloudy look on them. These ones are second generation from the wild that I spawned together and now they're third generation, I guess. Uh, and then these are the neon red resboras that I got from the wet spot in Oregon that I ordered um, here, but they look more clear. They have an orange color at night. Um, not the best rasbora I've ever had, but they're kind of interesting. They have a nice shape. They'd be really good in a nature tank that was like all green. But in this tank, there's so much red and brown that they kind of just wash out to that browner color. They don't color up. Um, also, the last of my erythromicron babies are growing up. See them here? Hello. Uh, and the adults, you know, there's a female, two females there. Um, there's the blue rice fish check out the um gold nebula shrimp these are them here i got from aquatic arts looking good feeling good they look like they got a galaxy on them um they are getting eaten by the the betta a little bit but not not terribly there's only one that hunts them i taught them the trick if you saw my video of this is gnarly or whatever i said um incredible footage of uh, gudgeon and uh, bettas eating snails with the puffers but yeah they i taught them crushing snails to eat snails and now all these silly uh all these silly little uh bettas want to eat snails but they leave the shrimp alone when they're eating the snails this one stayed really wild looking see that um Oh, awesome. Daniel keeping fish. I'm glad that um, you dug it. Mandy. Yeah, there's a lot of people with good channels in here also. Hey, what's up, Bob? How's it going? Speaking of good channels, check out Bob's channel as well. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, Zen Ginger, that video is nice. I need to comment more. I go, th I let it go through on autoplay and I don't interact on other people's channels enough because I get burnout interacting with mine. But, um, you, y'all are great. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I do check out your channels. So, um, just so you know. Also, I got some new Nymphaea Minucha and Nymphaea Nanangensis. 
uh, which just looks like Nymphaea boring. I don't know. Let's see here. It's just, it looks like, almost like the Taiwan one. I don't know. The Nymphaea minutias that I got from Aquatic Arts look way better. They have uh, some interesting leaf shapes on some of them. And then uh, there's another one in here. Oh, yeah, it stays so low. This is the smallest species of lily uh, in the world. Uh, and it stays small. But check out this other. This is Nacea um, Carangsis, I think it's called. Carangsis. I'll have to look that up again later. But I got this. Uh, and its stem is like rock hard it will hold itself upright out of the water and so i got some of this too it's interesting stuff um to have in the tank uh but yeah it it it's turning a little lighter now that i've got it under this this light i love these lights uh if you don't want to mess with settings and you just want things to work uh those lights are freaking great my Salvinia. Uh, all right, last thing. Last things first. All right, let's go out and about. Oot and a boot. Um, I'm going to switch you guys over. I hope I don't lose you. All right, do I still have you? Do I still have you? I swear I Oh, it smells so good out here. My neighbor's barbecuing or something. 